Well, let's go ahead and jump in here. This morning we were talking about, um, I'm not even sure how, if we really kind of finish that up, but we'll just kind of call it. Oh, we were really talking about um, don't tolerate thought to the contrary and didn't quite grab a hold of count the thing done. We got spent spending much, so much time on not letting your thoughts be changed. Um, so let's pick up here. And we were talking from Romans 4, 16 through 21, how did Abraham, who against hope, believed that that's what we kind of got off. We got kind of got hung back up from there over into, um, you know, counting the thing done and not letting thoughts get in your head and all that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes when you're teaching something, it's, it's, it's hard not to, especially when the Holy Ghost kind of gets you and leads you over there, not to go back and cover up some ground you've already covered. Um, but you know what? It's okay to cover ground you've already covered because sometimes you get something, something you, know, you missed the first time that it was being taught, um, you get it the second time through. Um, I, was, I actually was, we, we were repairing my shelves in my office the other day, and, and I was looking at, just kind of picked up my notebooks, picked up my notebook from Faith Library with Dad Hagen. And you know what? Every single time we had him all year, his foundation text was Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. For, the, for every Faith Library we had with him. I mean, he may, now he may go off of there and go some other places, but he started there. So it never hurts to go over the ground again, does it? How many of you ever looked for something and you lost? I've already looked there. Mm-hmm. And then somebody comes in and looks where you looked, and guess what they found? What it was you were looking for? Why? Wow, because you missed stuff. See, your, your mind will assume things. And it'll, if, you don't, if you don't keep a guard on that particular uh, aspect of the mind, it will assume things and shut down and not hear. Why? Because it assumes it already heard it. How many of you, you know, now the other day, me and Nathan, he pick, he'll, he'll go pick out like three movies to give to me if we're going to watch a movie. He'll say, here. Right, he gave me The Bridge on the River Kwai. Um, I don't know, Braveheart and something else. And so I handed him back Bridge on the River Kwai because he, he, you know, he'd seen it years ago as a kid, but he didn't remember it real well. And, and I'll be honest with you, it's, it's a movie, you know, that, um, and it's not a shoot 'em up action movie. We're blowing. I mean, they do have some. You know, the bridge gets blown up in the end and that kind of stuff. And there's some shooting, but it's it's a it's a dialogue movie. It's it's the antagonist and the protagonist. I mean, all the way throughout the whole movie, and you got to follow that. And it's two hours and twenty minutes. Winner, winner of seven Academy Awards. Uh, um, Obi Wan won the the uh, Academy Award before he was uh, Obi Wan. <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. And um, so, but I, you know, we started, we started out, and I don't know, for some reason, when it started out, the very, very, very beginning, I went, I don't remember this. Now, I remember the part where they're whistling. <laughs> I said, I can't even do it. Do, 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 and come marching into the camp. But a lot of the stuff that happened before then, I didn't remember. All right? And see, so that's the same thing with, 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 with your mind does that. And so that's the same thing in the Bible and, and sermons and teachings. Um, you know, you could come back and teach exactly what you just taught maybe a week or two before or, or a year before or two years before, and people are going, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. You know, I mean, I've heard Dad Hagen teach on faith, you know, numerous times, and I'll even pull out some of his old stuff and, and listen to it, and I'll go, I don't remember, I don't remember that. But he taught it. I heard the same tape series before. Amen. So Bible truths are the same way. When, we, when we're, we're learning and we're being taught, just because, I, you know, if I get up and start preaching a sermon, you know, that's the same title he preached, you know, yet last year, and it was the same title, sermon, same notes and stuff. Uh, listen. Now, I'm not telling you, like, I'm not saying listen to what I'm about to say. I'm saying listen. Listen. Because there could be things there you missed the first 25 times. And a lot of the time, there's a key that unlocks a whole lot of stuff for you. Yeah. Now, you know, all y'all know Nathan's in, in um, he's a music major at Greensboro. And, and I'll tell you what, he'll, he'll be messing around, and all of a sudden, something changes. Something the way he's playing, or something the way he's singing. Something, I mean, something the way he's writing the music or whatever. And, and, I, and I'll say, well, what happened? He said, well, I was sitting in class the other day, and he said something. Now, I know he said it before. But he, and it just unlocked something. And when it unlocked it, man, this whole other world opened up for him. You see what I'm saying? And so 
<coughs> I mean, his, his guitar teacher teaching some chord progression, and all of a sudden he's home doing all kinds of stuff because it unlocked something else. That knowledge, un and, and listen, it's stuff that he had seen the teacher do, the teacher had told him, but for some reason that day he got it. Always come with an open heart. And if we cover ground again, we say, well, praise God, let's go see, what, see what's there. I may have missed the first time through. Amen? Because we, we, we want to grow, don't we? Amen? Oh, another sermon on faith. Well, uh, praise the Lord. The just shall live by faith. Amen? Amen? And faith is an act. Wigglesworth was right. All right. So we were, we, were we, we kind of started out in count the thing done, went back up into uh, don't tolerate a fault to the contrary and never really quite covered count the thing done. So we were, we were there in talking about who against hope believed in hope, verse 18, that, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Amen. So shall thy seed be. I'm sorry, my daughter just sent me a text message and said, you can watch online. I'm preaching, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. They were wheels up at 2.11 this afternoon. They were wheels down at, I mean, at 12.11, 2.11, and, no, 2.11, and down at 4.21, Tulsa to Hampton. Hallelujah. It's nice to have a private jet, isn't it? Glory to God. So it's also about Abraham who against hope, or when there was all natural hope had been abated, he hopefully, remember we, talk, we, got, we really got talking about how expectancy is Bible hope, not wishing. Big difference. Okay, so with an expectancy, he believed, amen, in hope, or he, he believed in the expectancy that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Hallelujah. So shall thy seed be. He had a word. He had a word from God that said, so shall thy seed be, and he believed it and had an expectancy that it was going to come to pass. Can somebody say amen? amen? And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Why? Being fully persuaded that, he, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. That what he had promised... Now, a lot of times, we kind of look at this, or either this scripture, or we kind of maybe look at other places, and we kind of get this mindset that he who promised was able to perform it. That's not what it says. It says he, what he promised he was able to perform. God will do what he said he would do. If you'll be strong in faith and sacred not in unbelief. Amen? Yes, Glory to God. Um, Romans 4, 7, 19, the Amplified says he did not weaken in faith. When he considered the utter impotence of his body, which was good as dead because he was about 100 years old, or, he, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Hallelujah. So we have here that, you know, even though that he was 100 years old and her womb was dead, God had a word. God had a word. God will often give you things. You know, his, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you something. There's all kinds of scriptures in the Bible that are totally contrary and totally impossible in the natural to come to pass based on what the circumstances are. You know, if y'all been around long enough, y'all heard me refer to Sarah's womb as uh, prune womb Sarah. That thing was dried up. There was no life in it. He wasn't giving birth. He's 90 years old. I mean, you want to artificially inseminate that womb. It's dried up. Y'all hear? The Bible said it ceased to be with her after the manner of women. Amen. That, mean, that means that she, was, or she, she, that she was, uh, wasn't ovulating. There wasn't anything going on in her body that would allow her to have a child, and then it just dried up like a prune. Hello? But God gave life to that. I, I'm, I'm trying to make it graphic, because you've got to understand, this was not just an odd case where people just happened to be old and then something happened weird. The Bible said it ceased to be with her after the manner of women. That's King Jimmy for prune wound. All right? Are y'all here? You go home. She can't have a baby. It's impossible. But what's impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. And the Bible, and, and even here it says, and when he considered the utter impossibility, I think that's what it says here. Um, see, it was about when, he, when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's deadened, 
Yes, right. Deadened. Wow. He considered her deadened womb. I'm accurate. That prune womb. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Ed Taylor version. Hallelujah. So, here we have a situation where God gives a word when it is utterly impossible for it to come to pass in the natural. But Abraham had an expectancy. Hallelujah. He had a Bible hope. He believed in the expectancy according to what was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Thus, Sarah's womb had to take on life again in order to fulfill the word of God. Had to. We had to have regenerative properties taking place in both Abraham and in Sarah, supernaturally. <clears throat> but see, God's, life, God's word is life. Amen. Aren't they? God's word's life. God's word, remember what Hebrews says this, God, the, the word of God's a living thing. See, that's why when we take hold of that word, it produces life in things that are dead. Now, not, now that's not just physical dead things. How about dead visions and dead dreams and dead desires? Woo, you can take a hold of the Word of God and breathe life back into them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I said, you can breathe life back into them. Can you say amen? Oh, Shanda. Skilly Banda, as my friend Fawaz used to say. Hallelujah. And so we have here Abraham believing the Word of God, the promise of God. Amen? And he was fully persuaded that what he promised, he was able to perform. Hello? What he had promised, he was able to perform. Glory to God. Now, Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is, now I know I, you probably, if, you, if you're the old word of faither, have heard umpteen thousand sermons on now faith. Faith is right now. Now faith is. I preached them before. And it, it's, good, it's good preaching material, but it's not accurate. In the sense that the, the word now there, it has nothing to do with it being right now or anything. It's just, a, it's just a transitory phrase, you know, thereby or because of this, okay? So, if you, you know, and I know we're trying to get people to see, you know, faith is, a, is in the present, and I understand that. But, you know, to be biblically accurate, that's not what that word now has to do with. It has nothing like that to do with the, the thing. Good preaching. Good preaching phrase, but if you're doing next to Jesus, it's not accurate to preach it that way. Now, faith is, so that, that alone makes it now, okay? But I just want you to understand, because people say, I got now faith, you know, and, you know, and you know, we, we want to be accurate, amen? Let's just take now off, because, because now is, is, is a transition from the previous chapter, which is really not a chapter, it was written as a letter, one, one thought, you know, it transitions from, you know, holding fast to our faith, uh, all the things are written in chapter 10 and going into this. Faith is the substance. The emphasis here on, is on what faith is. It is the substance. Now, some translations say the title deed, the guarantee, all right, of things hoped for. Now, here we are with that, that Bible th hope thing, that Bible hope again. Faith is your guarantee that your expectancy is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Your faith is the guarantee of your expectancy. Amen? Now, let me say this. Faith without hope. I'm going to say, now, faith without love is dead. Being, faith without hope won't produce anything. you got to have an expectancy. you got to look into the Scripture and have an expectancy arise that what he promised is able to perform and then lay hold of it with faith and bring it to pass. What he promised. Did he promise you healing? Did he promise you prosperity? Did he promise you deliverance? Did the problem, you know, you know did, he, did, God, did God give you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind or not? Amen. Well, you got to lay hold of all those things, but you got to have a Bible expectancy because until you have, you know, Copeland had a series out a number of years ago. And I'm sure he still has it out there. But it's called uh, Hope, the Blueprint of Faith. 
hope the blueprint fans used, used to have those, those uh, cassette packages and it had a sleeve on top of a little book that you know study guy that went with it slid in on the front of that that cassette album sleeve and it was called uh, hope the blueprint of faith you see if you don't have any hope you might have the faith that can move mountains but you can't get produce anything because it's, faith is a substance of things hoped for you got to have an expectancy there has to be a vision there has to be a desire created from the word of god that you could have something and see and who against hope believed in hope According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. The word of God created an expectancy in him that God was able to do what he said he would do. His faith laid a hold of it and brought it to pass. <clears throat> His faith took that, that expectancy of the spirit that says God, God can do what he promised. And faith says, yeah, and I got it. And lays hold of it and brings it into the, brings it into the realm of possession by the believer. Can you say amen? <clears throat> so faith, faith is the substance, the guarantee, the title, the things up for, the evidence, things not seen. Now, if you used to watch Fred Price years ago, they come on every evidence. Yeah. Is there enough evidence? Evidence <laughs> to put you away. Well, is there enough evidence to convict you of being a faith person? Amen. Your faith is your evidence. Listen. People are looking for things to give them the, the, the um, um, assurance that they have what they're believing for, and, and your faith is your assurance. Your faith is your assurance. Can you say amen? Your faith, remember it says, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. I mean, the, the, uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen with these eyes. Now let me say this: If you quote, say, "I'm believing for a new car," and, and you won't you won't believe it until you see it, that's not faith. Anybody can believe a car is there if you're out there sitting in it. That don't take any faith. That's not faith. Hello, that's sense knowledge. You've obtained a you, you've come to the conclusion you possess the car because you're using your senses to, det to d detect its existence. That's not faith. That's not faith. That's being sense ruled. That's saying, you know, well, I feel it. I see it. Hello? I can smell the leather. I can hear the sound of the engine running. Y'all hear you go home? See, that's sensory perception. That's not faith. As a matter of fact, it takes no faith to operate in those realms. It takes no faith for me to believe there's a chair there. When I put my knee down, I was going to, I was going to land on that chair. That was absolutely no faith at all. None. Why? Wow. Well, I can see it. I can feel it. Hello? That wasn't a faith move for me to put my knee up here and lean on this chair. No faith. Well, don't you have some faith that's not going to drop through? No. <laughs> you know, it's not faith. I'm, I, I'm not even, see, my sense knowledge has told me that if it's constructed properly, if I come in contact with it, it's going to sustain. It's designed to carry a load of so much. Hello. The only time I would, and my senses would, would get uptight is if I put my knee down and went through. And I would get an unexpected result. But then my senses would analyze that and begin to say, well, you better test it and make sure that it's steady, it's sure, and, and so forth. It may have dry rot. It will begin to come to conclusions. But faith believes in that which it cannot see. It believes that what God said is more real than what you can or cannot see. It looks at something and says, well, I got a report right here from a doctor that says you have three months to live, hang it up, go to an island and party it up because you're going to die soon. But my faith says I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. It doesn't matter what the doctors report. Whose report will you believe? Amen? Amen? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe that even though my body says I'm not well, 
even though the doctor says I'm not well, even though the CAT scan, now no, this isn't a confession, I'm just saying, I'm using that as an example, even though everything around me says you're not well, that you're not going to make it, you're going to die, the Word says, by his stripes I was healed. The Word says I'll, I'll live and not die. I'll declare the works of the Lord. Amen. The Word said all things are possible to him that believeth. Amen. Are you here? It says, G it, it, the Word teaches me that Jesus is my healer. Now, it takes faith in the face of evidences in the natural realm that are saying otherwise for me to believe what God's Word says, and, which is in direct opposition to what the circumstances say. That takes faith. And my guarantee that it so is my faith. I have an expectancy that what He promised He's able to do. And my faith is my guarantee He'll do it. I'm not making God. You get people who run off on these little tangents, these little, you know, the, the, uh, the apologists who are against everything except unbelief. If you go study what they believe, they're against everything but except unbelief. Uh, they're against healing. They're against the gifts of the Spirit. They're against the baptism in the Holy Ghost. They're against miracles, signs, and wonders. They're against this. They're against that. They're against, I mean, it's against everything. They're against faith. You know, they're against, you know, the Bible confession. Hello, I don't believe in positive confession where you're saying stuff that's not lining up with the Bible. I don't believe that's, right. that's not accurate. You know, they're just apologists who just believe in, who don't believe in anything except unbelief and slam anybody who does. Well, bless their hearts, darling hearts and stupid heads. Hello. <coughs> Y'all here, you go home. I just, you know, sometimes you get kind of fed up with listening to them. You know, you, start, you know, you go out and you start speaking what God's Word says, and they, got, they, they come out, they don't, they, they just want to slam you for believing the Bible. Well, if you can't believe the Bible, what are you going to believe? Yeah. Well, my cemetery teacher told me. Well, that's your problem. Why don't you go give all that up, go to Bible school that teaches faith, and put stuff in you instead of taking everything out of you. Come out with some zeal. Come out with some Word. Come out full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I, I kind of find it interesting, well, you know, when they, when they uh, came to find disciples to take care of uh, issues in the church that were going on, remember the widows weren't being uh, taken care of, they said, choose you out seven men full of faith in the Holy Ghost. They didn't say, choose you out seven guys that you like or whatever. Get seven people full of faith in the, just to serve the widows. And if you've got to have faith in the Holy Ghost to serve the widows, you've got to have faith in the, in the Holy Ghost to do anything. <laughs> Y'all here going home. Amen. And so, um, I was running off on somewhere on that. You, you got to, you've got to get back to saying what the Bible says and believing that that's more real than what you're looking at. I'm not twisting God's arm. Now, he even said in one place, he said, concerning my promises, command ye me. And the King James is a little uh, wimpy on that translation. Because really the Hebrew says, concerning my promises, you demand me. We can't demand God anything. He told us to. Now, whether you like that or not, I can't help it. He told us to. So for you to say you can't do that is telling him you're not going to do what he told you to do. Who, now, who's, who's messed up? The person who's doing what God told him to do or the person who says you can't do what God told you to do? Oh, you're twisting. We don't believe in that confession when you twist God's arm. I'm not twisting God's arm. I'm just saying what he said. That's not twisting his arm. You know, the, the, the word covenant has an interesting meaning in the Greek. It means to say the same thing as. To say the same thing as. I'm in covenant with God. I just say what he says. Praise the Lord. See, that, that's how, that's how uh, I count the thing done. I say what he says about it. Well, it's a whole lot better saying what I feel about it yeah. or what you see. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You get, you get some people coming in, and they'll say, oh, my God, you look terrible. <laughs> what did the doctor say? He said, I had three months. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Oh, we need a miracle. Lord, we need a miracle. They go out in the hall and say, they're going to die in three months. Hello? 
they ain't out there praying, they're out there telling everybody, you're going to be dead in three months. Now, uh, about three years ago, one of Nathan's um, baseball teammates were in high school, and I'd, I'd help, when he was on JV, I'd help coach through his JV years. Um, and it was, I was trying to, you know, I just, you know, I was available, I could go out in the afternoons, like, you know, because of my schedule, I could work around and go out in the afternoons and help. A lot of times the coach couldn't be there until a half hour after practice started because of his job. He, he was a landscaper, he couldn't get there. And so I had the team running and going and stuff. So one of our players, um, we, we, got a, we, we found out, a, an email went out or something from the team that one of the players' dads had been up in the shower, taking a shower, and fell out of the shower and had had a massive stroke. Doctors gave him basically no chance to live. I mean, none. They couldn't stop the bleeding. I went up to the hospital as a, as a, as a parent, coach, friend of the family, and uh, because I had badges, you know, because I'm a pastor, I have, you know, the, the access badges. You can get into places that, you know, just people can't go in. They won't let you in the ICU and, and you know, critical care units. Without, and now they got it where you, without them giving the name on, on the thing, they won't let you in for that. You got to have the family give them your name to even get up into there. I tell you, doctors, I mean, hospitals don't want preachers in there. They just don't want them in there. I mean, it's just flat out the fact. They don't believe, they, you know, you've got somebody who's ungodly, don't believe anything. But um, I called, I think I called the wife and she got, she got my name on it. I think that's what happened there. They put my name on when I got in. <coughs> and I went in and just sat there for a little while. And they, What's going on? What's the doctor saying? Yada, yada, yada. And, and so I said, well, they knew I was a pastor. Can I pray for him? You know, the family's really uptight. I mean, you know, they're not, you know, they're, 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 they're getting the doctor report. Well, I just did like the Copeland said. Talk to people like they believe like you believe. I prayed that like they believe like I believe. Quoted Ezekiel over, Ezekiel 6, commanded the, flood of, the flow of blood to cease. Commanded him to come out. I mean, it was a deep, it was a deep hemorrhage from the, tr from the stroke. Hello? Then I went out and sat and talked with, I talked with the, the wife. Well, I went home right then because they were, you know, came back up the next day and sat down with the wife out in, the, out in the, uh, the family area out there and talked to her and just, you know, just spoke faith. You know, she's, you know, you, you, I tell you, when people, when people, they're most desperate, they need people who will come in and speak faith. They don't need people coming in and just crying with you and telling you how bad it is. You I mean, you, listen, well, what if you, what, here's, where's some people scared? I don't know why I'm over on this. But thank God for notes that got me started. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some people don't want to speak faith because they're scared it ain't going to work and they're going to look bad. Your reputation is of no relevance. Hello? Now, you understand what I'm talking about, your reputation is in, in, in maintaining a godly lifestyle. That, that, but I'm talking about your reputation that you prayed and, you, and it didn't happen is of no relevance. As a matter of fact, that's just fear of failure and tells me you're not in faith. Go ahead, shoot me. All right. On no second thought, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the messenger. Now, you've got to give people faith in their hour of need. Why? Because I'll tell you what, there are times that just in the middle of that, when somebody comes in and speaks faith, they lay hold of it. And maybe they have it before, maybe they won't afterwards, but at that moment, they do. And if you don't give them something to lay a hold of, they'll never get it. Now, let me say this. He's out of the hospital. Walks. Yes, you know, for, for a year or two years. He got, but can, can, I mean, he came out of the hospital. They, they basically gave him no hope. You know, it was such a, such a, such a bad, such a bad uh, stroke. Basically, he's going to die. And they could not stop the bleeding. But you know, the Word of God will stop the bleeding. I said, the Word of God will stop the bleeding. Hallelujah. He's alive. Amen. He got to come watch his son play baseball games. Hallelujah. Yeah, it was a little tough for him for a while. I mean, recovering. But you know what? Uh, we, we got enough faith into him. To believe him out from dying. Why didn't you get him raised completely up if you had all that faith? They had something to do with it. 
but we've got enough into them to get them out of there alive. Amen. I know I prayed in faith. I'll tell you, the anointing was, was there when I was praying in faith. The anointing will always accompany faith. Amen. You get over into faith, man, I'll tell you, God will do some stuff. Not that he's withholding, but faith, faith releases him. Amen. And so if we'll get into faith and count the thing done, you know, you have to step out and, and say some stuff that you don't want to say. But your mind goes, oh, my God, what if I say that and it don't happen? I'd rather go down trying than just go down. I'd rather go down fighting than go down. Amen? You just might as well make up your mind. You're going to have a fight, and you're going to, you're just going to, you're going to have to go out there. Brother, how you say, uh, liver, uh, uh, he, he said, I'd say, I, I, sink or swim, live or die, go over, go under. He said, I felt like I was going to do them all. Hallelujah. See, when you, when you take your stand of faith, you've got to take the stand that whether I sink or swim, live or die, go over, go under, I'm, I'm believing this. And I can tell you, you're going to have days you think you've done them all. That you, that you're, you, you'll have days you'll think your faith is on life support. And some days it might be. Amen. Some days it might be. But praise God. If you'll count the thing done and hold fast, you'll win in the end. I love the fact that, you know, even when, even when it looks like you've lost, I mean, think about Jesus at the cross and think about the work of, the, of what he did. If we were to go by all the circumstances up until the resurrection, it looked like he lost. From the time that they came to the Garden of Gethsemane, until the time of his resurrection, it looked like things went from bad to worse. Come on now. But he had already said before, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. And that's why when he got to the trial, he opened not his, he opened not, not his mouth as a lamb before the shearer. Why? Because he already said what was going to happen, and he won't gonna give his, he won't gonna give his words opportunity to countermand that. As the son of, as Jonah was three days and nights in the belly of the well, so shall the son of man be in the earth. He had spoken things. People didn't want to receive it. Dad prophesied his own going home in 2003. People didn't want to receive it. Hello? Sister Lynette just shared this at, at Winter Bible. She said he called her into his office in April and said, I'm done. You're going to have to take over and run this thing. And she says, no, no, we need you. She said he never, he never said another word to her along that lines until he, even up to the time he passed away. He was planning to go on home. He made his plans. He's going home. Hello? You've got to get to where when you say something, you count that thing done. That's it. That's it. That's the end of the discussion about the matter. It's settled. Settled. Amen? It's settled. It's not open for discussion. It's settled. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know for sure. There's no Bible evidence that it actually happened. But I kind of got to speculate that when Abraham showed up at the gate and said, Guys, I've changed my name. From Abram to the father of many nations. There's some of the young whippersnappers who thought they knew everything. Had to have, hey, Jerry, Abe's gone a little senile, don't you think? <laughs> Running around telling everybody to call him Abraham. I don't believe without positive confession stuff. Well, I, I don't care what you believe, God does. God started calling him Abraham before he was the father of many nations. Hello? Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you go, you're going to have to hold fast. You're going to have to get that, count that thing done and not let go of it. You're going to have to look at it in a way and go, you know what? I'm, I, I, it's done. It's settled. It's settled in heaven. It's settled in my heart. It's settled in my confession. It's settled, glory to God. And I'm not backing off and I'm not changing and I'm not reversing. I'm, I'm going to be like Brother Summerall. I don't back up. I always go forward. Amen? 
Well, praise the Lord. Will you love the Lord? Uh, the next Sunday morning we'll pick up. We're going to finish it up giving glory to God and act as though you've received. Hallelujah.